Hello everyone, it's uh, Gavin Lloyd, so from uh, Exeter. So normally I'm the, uh, the college uh, airway lead and uh, it was my pleasure to give a talk on adult procedural sedation 2014. So the first thing uh, we talked about was Ketafol. Uh, clearly it isn't the new drug out there, it's ketamine and propofol together. So in summary for Ketafol, that would be if you're using it because it's a safer drug than propofol alone or ketamine, that's really not backed up by the evidence. Uh, it's no safer. Uh, do I use it personally? I do, just for selected cases. So for example, if you had a fractured tibia, you needing to move that around and then plaster it up above knee, well, realistically, that's a five or 10 minute procedure. If you just use propofol alone, you keep on having to give top up doses. Ketafol probably gives you a smooth or gives your patient a smoother sedation. So the second thing I covered was uh, ACEP policy, so an update from American College of Emergency Physicians on sedation. They asked four key questions. I think the real, uh, the real key question was, what about uh, pre-procedural fasting? So your patient's in your ED, they're not fasted, what should we do? And the clear evidence is that if you wait three hours and think it's safer to give the sedation further on, that just makes no sense whatsoever. So clearly you need to press on with whatever procedure you want to do, but use some common sense, back off on the level, on the target level of sedation you want to use. So the third thing I covered was using half doses of propofol or any agent for the high risk patients and particularly for the elderly. So from our own work in Exeter, there was a BJA publication, 1,008 patients, the sentinel events were more likely in the elderly population. You can have a look at our own uh, ED chart for, for propofol. It's on the college website. If you look at Enlighten Me, if you look at the propofol sedation, there's a good quality, there's a conflict of interest here because I wrote it, but there's a good quality sedation chart that we use and you might want to have a look at that. It'll say clearly half doses for the elderly. A further point I made in the talk was audits and using a specific audit tool. So if you look out there, the World Siva audit tool is the one we use for our BGA paper. I recommend you use it because we can all, if we all started to use it, you can start comparing your data versus data elsewhere. It just makes sense, it's very easy to use. You'll find it, I've put a whole pile of references uh, to my talk and the talk is going to be uploaded on the college website. You can find the reference there specifically for that audit tool. So the final point was, was, was the key thrux of my, my talk was about advanced procedural sedation. So that's taking on the higher risk patients. I gave 10 top tips on how to take these patients on. And I really emphasise at the end that this, this is our baby. The lead guys in emergency medicine, it's us guys in emergency medicine really at the front of this, not the anaesthetists. We are the experts in sedation. Have a look at those 10 top tips and don't just be satisfied with just being competent or proficient. Aim to master the skills of advanced procedural sedation. We can do it. Go and master it, achieve clinical excellence.